What's that, Mama? It's a newspaper, dear. What's a newspaper? It used to tell us the news of the day. What was it telling us? Five years ago or so, we'd be hard pressed to point to a specific way that each of us living in the lower 48 states was being personally affected by climate change in a way that mattered. Fast forward to today though, we see the evidence of climate change all around us and it's affecting us today. The research I do compares what our world will look like and how that will impact our health, our water, our energy, and our economy, depending on the choices we make. If we continue to depend on fossil fuels as our primary source of energy, and our carbon emissions continue to rise, we will see impacts occur faster and to a much greater degree eventually reaching the point where we cannot prepare for those changes anymore. They are beyond our ability to adapt to. The most important distinction of our time isn't left or right, it's not liberal or conservative, it's pro-future or anti-future. Is your life and your lifestyle, are your voting patterns, are the things that you do with your time and energy, the policies that you support, pro-future or anti-future? So often we feel as if we have to have green values in our heart to care about climate change, but we don't. If we're human, if we live on this planet, if we care about the place where we live, if we care about our family and our community, then we care about climate change. Those of us who have emitted, those nations that have emitted most of the CO2, need to also step up to this compassionate responsibility to support those nations that didn't contribute really much to the problem and are going to suffer the most. I sometimes say the future is calling us to greatness. Each of us is in that same place. Because when we sacrifice, when we do something significant that can actually be very small, we can participate in a movement that the future will judge as great. We care about things like making sure people have enough food to eat, or clean water to drink, access to health care, education, and a stable environment in which to live and thrive. But today, we can pour all of our money, all of our effort, everything we have into that humanitarian bucket. And it will not be enough because the bucket has a hole in the bottom. And that hole is climate change. And it's getting bigger and bigger. Until we patch that hole, we cannot address the other issues so near and dear to our hearts. I think one of the great needs of today is for philanthropists, big committed philanthropists, to step up in the same way that Andrew Carnegie did. Andrew Carnegie basically made thousands of libraries possible for the average American. And that's what we need now, is we need philanthropic money to work together to help support a grassroots campaign so not just thousands or even tens of thousands but ultimately and pretty quickly millions of people are organized from the bottom up so that we can speak with one voice. Let's together let philanthropy know that the future is calling them to greatness. They will be the heroes of future generations. We did it sweetie. The people asked and the philanthropists responded.